Welcome to the 2020 drought and 2021 water year and what we might expect in the coming months presentation. My name is Wendy Kelly and I work for the University of Wyoming Extension and I'm fully funded by the USDA Northern Plains Climate Hub as the Regional Extension Program Coordinator. Today I'm going to start out talking about the 2020 drought and how it evolved. I'll compare it to previous droughts from this century. And then we'll look ahead at what the water year 2021 might look like, including the first two months of 2021 water year, what they've shaped up to be so far, as well as some outlooks from NOAA um, regarding this coming winter and early spring. So as of April 28th of 2020, the US drought monitor map is showing, apologies, uh, the U.S. Drought Monitor map is showing that less than 2% of Wyoming was categorized as D0 or abnormally dry. And you can see that here in Sublet and Fremont counties. I want to note that D0 is abnormally dry. It's not a drought classification. Okay, there are four drought classifications, moderate, severe, extreme, and exceptional drought that you can see here at the bottom of the screen. So as of April 28th, there was zero drought technically in Wyoming, um, according to the U.S. Drought Monitor map on the classifications. We do see that on uh, May 1st of this year, <clears throat> the National Condition the National Condition Monitoring Observer Reports System, which is a mouthful, and I'll refer to it here um, on out as Seymour System. The Seymour system received its first report of conditions in Wyoming, um, again on May 1st from uh, Niobrara County. And they reported that it was moderately dry there. <clears throat> this was an ag report, I will, and I'll share some of the impacts here in a minute. But I do want to highlight at the top that there's these different tabs. So the Seymour system uh, appreciates uh, condition reports and impacts related to fire, wildlife, uh, freshwater fish, household, community hydropower, etc. Um, and everything from severe drought conditions um, to severe wet. So it, it, it's everything in between um, there. So again, the first report came in on May 1st is moderately dry in Niobrara County and some of the impacts that they were reporting um, crop related, reduced yield, plant stress, livestock related, reduced pasture forage, um, decreased stocking weight, stock weights, excuse me, um, less water, etc. So we saw that that April 28th um, drought monitor map had some abnormally dry conditions. Um, and we can see here on the NOAA climate at a glance website that the first seven months of the water year, and, and let me pause, a water year is defined as October 1 of one year through September 30th of the following year. So the first seven months of water year 2020, which is October 9, 2019 through April 2020, Wyoming as a whole ranked the 41st driest water year out of 125 years. So that's the state as a whole. Now you can see on this map that there's a couple of counties that have some coloring. Um, for example, Uinta, Sublet, Sheridan counties. And these counties um, are exper experienced their top, you know, third driest uh, years percentage wise out of 126 years, uh, or excuse me, 125 years for that first seven months. We do see that Platt and Goshen County experience were, or were experiencing the top 10% driest years of 125 years for those first seven months. So skipping ahead to June 2nd, um, seeing how the conditions evolved, we can see now that um, a significant portion of the state, you know, almost or over 71%, almost 72%, is abnormally dry plus just under 2% that is considered moderate drought here in Uinta and Lincoln County. Um, so it, it did spread quite rapidly um, or, and, and quite extensively. 
now looking at the drought monitor map for July 21st. So fast forwarding, it looks different. We've seen an increase in area impacted as well as an increase in severity. We now see some severe drought, that's this D2 color. And then we also have some extreme drought, D3, which developed here in uh, Sheridan, Johnson, and into Eastern Bighorn County. Going from July 21st, I, I want to take a moment in passing to talk briefly about these categories that I've been talking about with abnormally dry and then moderate, severe, extreme, and exceptional drought. These five categories are very specific and set. They're defined. And the US Drought Monitor relies on these definitions to guide them as they look for a convergence of evidence in all of the data that they're reviewing every week, as well as reports or conditions out on the ground. So there needs to be a convergence of evidence and they're looking at it in, with a historical lens. So in historical context of what is the likelihood that these conditions, whatever they are in a given area at a given time on you know, July 15th, historically, what did July 15th look like? And out of a hundred years, what's the likelihood that these conditions would occur? Um, you know, is it one to 2% of the time? If so, that would be exceptional drought, okay? Extreme drought, three to 5% of the hundred years. So that is how the US Drought Monitor, when we're talking about these five categories in the US Drought Monitor, that's how they're thinking about it. It's this historical context. And they're looking at a, a lot of data from different um, um, indices and, and um, on the ground reports as well, and looking for a convergence of evidence to inform what um, the Drought Monitor reports on a week-to-week -week basis. Um, so we're transitioning a little bit from the drought monitor. We saw that we had this extreme drought that, that developed. Um, first time we saw it was July 21st map. Um, and then kind of fast forwarding to the end of the water year, um, which would be the end of September. The, the Seymour system, we see a lot more reports that came in throughout of the state of Wyoming. Impacts in terms of the ag sector, included, again, reduced yield, uh, less water for irrigation, insect infestation, animal stress, um, less water. So a lot of really um, major impacts that were happening out on the ground. Uh, again, looking at the water year 2020 as a whole, uh, this is again from the NOAA Climate at a Glance website. And they're showing that Wyoming ranked 11th driest this water year, the 2020 water year out of 125 years. And then I've included what it was for each county out of 125 years. So you can see here that Goshen and Platte counties had their fourth driest water year out of 125 years. Now let's think about it in a little bit of a different way. For Wyoming, um, we received, and as a whole, 12.35 inches of precipitation throughout the water year. And this is 20% less precipitation than the 1901 to 2000 mean. We can look at this for a couple of the other counties. So Goshena County, again, it had its fourth driest water year out of 125 years on record. And what that means, or another way to think about it or compare it, is that they received 37% less precipitation compared to the 1901 to 2000 mean, that average. And then you can see for a couple of other counties. So this is the water year as a whole. Keep this in mind as we will start to shift gears. And you'll see this a little bit. Uh, you'll see the, the map again later on in the presentation. But keep it in mind as we start to shift gears and think about the 2021 water year um, here in a few more slides. Um, so November 3rd, here's the US Drought Monitor map. We can see that there's still um, a lot of drought throughout Wyoming. I mean, we have less than 3% of Wyoming that there's nothing, not even abnormally dry conditions. Um, and just, you know, it, it's still pretty severe. Um, and it's really just here in Teton County 
that there is no um, abnormally dry or drought conditions. I mean, they do have some abnormally dry that appears, but um, that's the only place that there's none in terms of intensity. So that's according to November 3rd drought monitor map. Looking at the November 15th, or excuse me, the December 15th, which is the most recent drought monitor map as of this recording. So this map is pretty similar to the November 3rd map, although we do see that here in Teton County where there's white and that has now expanded. So we've seen an increase in the percentage of area that the white is covering, which is a positive thing into Park County as well as a little bit into Fremont County. Um, but we still see that there's some exceptional drought um, and a lot of um, extreme and severe and moderate drought um, still going on. So how does the 2020 drought compare? We are gonna take a look at this. It's a nice visual representation um, showing, you can see from January 1st of 2000. So on the left side of the screen, and then you'll move right to December 15th, 2020. So the beginning of the century through um, December 15th of 2020, what the US Drought Monitor map has indicated category by week, and it tells a story, right? So we can oops, see here that this number two is showing that the last um, drought that was this severe and extensive was the 2012 drought um, that went into uh, 2013. Prior to that, we had about nine years of consecutive um, pretty severe drought here in Wyoming in the early part of the century. And so what this tells us, or it's a reminder to us that we're no strangers to drought, okay? So um, we don't know if 2020 was a one-year drought, um, more similar to the 2012 that went into 2013 drought. We don't know, but there were some lessons learned from that drought and I, from the 2012 drought, and I hope that you reflect on those in the coming months. And I also hope that you think about the first part of the century where we had about nine years consecutive drought and what are some of those lessons learned for agricultural producers and land managers among others. What are those lessons learned? Because what if the 2020 drought becomes the 2020 through however many years out into the future? Um, and if you weren't here, you weren't operating, you weren't a land manager here, uh, I encourage you to seek out lessons learned from those who were and to start to think about decisions you might need to be making or be positioned to make in the coming uh, winter, spring, and next growing season as well if needed. So USDA Farm Service Agency, we're totally shifting gears. We're still talking about drought and the 2020 drought, but the USDA Farm Service Agency did um, has classified every county in Wyoming is either primary or contiguous natural disaster areas. And what this means, and you can see this on the right-hand side of the screen, is that you potentially as a producer, um, an agricultural producer, you might qualify for emergency loans um, or other disaster assistance programs. So reach out to your USDA service centers uh, to learn more. Or another way to kind of start this, um, trying to figure out what you may or may not qualify for, and there's a great website. It's here at the bottom. It's the USDA Disaster Assistance Discovery Tool. This is the web link. It's a five-step process where you answer questions, including your county or where you operate, et cetera. And it will help you to identify disaster assistance programs that you might qualify for. And then I'll also tell you what information you need to compile to provide to your local service center that you work with um, if you want to apply for uh, those assistance programs. So it's again, a great website, this USDA Disaster Assistance Discovery Tool. And this tool, um, depending on whether or not you qualify, might tell you about the Livestock Forage Disaster Program, the LFP, which I wanna mention a little bit here. So again, this is a USDA Farm Service Agency program. It's directly tied to the US Drought Monitor maps, which we've seen several of so far in this presentation. 
And I'm gonna, on the next slide, I'll kind of break it down a little bit more for you, but you can see a little, you can read here a little bit on the eligibility, but it's really about qualifying droughts um, during the normal grazing period for your county where you graze. It also includes for those who have permits on federally managed lands, if there was a, um, wildfire or fire that qualified, you might be able to qualify for this livestock um, forage disaster LFP program through USDA Farm Service Agency. So the eligibility again is tied to that um, US drought monitor map. Um, the qualifications, I'm going to briefly go through this, but you can see here, if you might recall that D2 category that we saw on the US drought monitor map, if your county, any area of your county for eight consecutive weeks had this category during the normal grazing period, you might qualify for one monthly payment. D3, anytime during the normal grazing period could result in three monthly payments. Um, there's an, another D3 with some D4, four weeks anytime during that normal grazing period, four monthly payments, and then D4, four weeks, they do not have to be consecutive. If there's D4 in your county for four weeks, you might qualify for five monthly payments. So something to be aware of and important to know, the deadline for the Livestock Forage Program is February 1st. So um, reach out to your service centers sooner rather than later um, if you are interested in this program and the assistance that it might be able to provide you. So looking ahead, 2021 water year, we have already started this water year. So it started October 1st of 2020 and it will end September 30th of 2021. So we're two full months into it. By the time you watch this recording, we'll be three full months into it. So um, let's just take a look, review again. What were the conditions? What were the rankings for water year 2020 for each of the counties? Remember, Wyoming as a whole, we had the 11th driest out of 125 years. The Goshen County over here, we had the, they had the fourth. We have Sheridan County that had the sixth driest water year 2020 on record going into the 2021 water year. So something to keep in mind, uh, take a look at uh, Park County. They had the 35th um, driest water year on record for 20, 2020 was going into the 2021 water year. So here we are, first two months, October through November of the 2021 water year. Um, Wyoming has, is ranking 20th driest out of 126 years. So the first two months of the water year, um, we've received so far across the state as a whole, 1.67 inches of precipitation, which is 25% less precipitation than the 1901 to 2000 mean, okay? Let's take a look at a couple of other counties. Again, Park County, I noted what their, um, uh, where they were at in the ranking at the end of the 2020 water year. Um, and you can see that they're blue here. I mean, they're compared to the other counties, they're doing relatively well. They've, they're 23%, they've received 23% more precipitation compared to the 1901 to 2000 mean for the first two months of the water year. But Goshen County recall that they had their fourth driest water year on record in 2020. In the first two months of the water year, they've received 57% less precipitation than the 1901 to 2000 mean. And you can see I've included the information for a couple of other counties here. Taking a look at the snow tail, this is the most current one. So today is December 22nd, so day I'm recording this. And the snow tell shows that the snow water equivalent for the different basins, there's only two basins in Wyoming that are over 100% here in Northwest Wyoming. Um, we can see that uh, along the western edge of the state, we're uh, just under 100%. But as we move east into central Wyoming and, and southern and eastern Wyoming, the story does not look as positive right now. Um, we are at the southeast portion of the state has about 8% of the snow water equivalent compared to this time of year, um, compared to the 1981 to 2010 median. Um, so we really need to see more snow water equivalent, more water in our snow 
um, to, to change this around. So what is NOAA showing for, what's NOAA's outlook for January as a whole, 2021? These maps you can see on here were made December 17th by NOAA. On the left is the temperature map and on the right is the precipitation map. So I'm gonna talk through how to interpret these maps. We'll start with the temperature map. And you can see here, Wyoming is um, within the black box. So the white has EC and EC stands for equal chance. That's an equal chance for above, near or below normal temperatures, okay? So really there's no clear signal on whether the temperature is gonna be above, near or below normal where it's white for Wyoming in the month of January. But where it's kind of clay colored, there's a 33 to 39% chance or probability for above average temperatures um, throughout the month of January or January as a whole. <clears throat> Looking at precipitation, the precipitation outlook for January, again, this white area represents equal chance for above, near or below normal precipitation for that area of Wyoming. And then if you look at where it says 33, it's kind of the lighter green and then um, uh, lighter green to a darker green, which is 44. So there's a 33 to 49% probability for that area of Wyoming to have above normal precipitation in the month of January. I also wanna make mention that NOAA has issued a La Nina advisory for this winter. Um, there's a 95% chance as of December uh, 17th that it will uh, go into late winter and or early spring. Um, in general, you can see on this, it says, you know, the, the Pacific jet stream will move uh, wet and cool conditions our way. But I, I'm just gonna note very broadly speaking about La Nina, Temperature and precipitation correlations with La Nina are very, very variable, They're very variable, um, and particularly for Wyoming because of where the jet stream goes. So you can look at the information, you might read some stuff out there saying it might be one way or another, but based on where Wyoming is situated and the jet stream, um, it's so variable um, that I, I'm careful in some sense on, um, I don't wanna overinterpret anything of what the La Nina could indicate for us. But I will share here on this side, um, this is showing on the left again is temperature and on the right is precipitation. The JFM, January, February, March. So it's saying January through March, what is the percent increase in risk for one extreme or another, whether if it's more extreme for cold or warm temperatures, dry or wet. So for Wyoming, the dice are not loaded any one direction for percent increase in cold or warm conditions for temperature. However, when we look at precipitation, and I'll oops, pull this up. So if you'd like to read, you can. Um, for precipitation, the dice are loaded a direction. We're kind of split. So on the eastern side of the state, we have 50 to 70% increase in risk for dry conditions. But, um, you know, this is, it would be Laramie County, Goshen, it even goes up into Natrona County some. This yellow is part of Natrona County, Johnson, Sheridan County. So an increased uh, risk for dry conditions January through March. On the opposite side of the spectrum, the dice are loaded for Northwest Wyoming to have anywhere from 50 to 90% increase in risk for wetter um, January through March. So you can see here in Yellowstone National Park, down through all of Teton County and including Northern Lincoln County as well. So this uh, wraps up the presentation looking, reflecting on, oops, the 2020 uh, drought, looking at conditions for water year 2021 and thinking about what it might be in and management decisions. I think based on what we saw with the La Nina, particularly in, um, in those risks, I think in some areas of the state, um, 
you know, to be geared up for and, and plan for uh, what you will do if this coming growing season 2021 um, is another drought year and, and reflecting on those consecutive drought years um, and management decisions and being prepared, even if you don't pull the trigger, uh, reflecting on your drought contingency plans and what decisions you might be implementing and adapting for the conditions as they develop. Feel free to reach out to me. Again, my name is Wendy Kelly. I work for the University of Wyoming Extension. I'm fully funded by the USDA Northern Plains Climate Hub. And the director of the Climate Hub is Dr. Danelle Peck, who is based down in Laramie. Thank you again for joining me. And I hope to uh, hear from some of you in the near future.